Two long parallel straight wires are separated by 18.0 centimeters. One wire carries a 3.00 milliamp current, while the other wire carries a 9.00 milliamp current in the same direction as the first. At what point on a line in between the two wires is the net magnetic field equal to zero due to the currents in those wires? Well, here we have a situation in which we have two different currents, each contributing its portion of a magnetic field to a point in space. These currents are due to two long straight wires that are parallel to each other. We'll call this wire wire one, and wire one we will say is carrying a current of I1. The second wire separated by a little distance is wire two. And wire two we are going to say is carrying current I2. And we know that current I1 is equal to 3.00 milliamps. Current I2 is equal to 9.00 milliamps, which I'll represent as which I'll represent as 3 times the current of the first wire. Now, if we are to apply the right-hand rule for each of these wires, we would see that these wires will carry a current that forms concentric circles, or rather, a magnetic field that forms concentric circles around the wires. So our right-hand rule gives us the orientation of these magnetic field lines. And these magnetic field lines are centered around each wire, and the direction is indicated in the diagram. So there's the direction of the magnetic field lines for wire one. And if we did the same thing for wire two, wire two, since the current is in the same direction, the magnetic field lines will have the same orientation about wire two. Now, these magnetic fields will overlap, giving us a net magnetic field at a point somewhere in between these two wires. Our goal is to find that point in which the net magnetic field is equal to zero. Now this three-dimensional perspective might be a little bit hard to use. So let's take a vantage point as if we're looking straight down the ends of these wires as the current is moving away from us. So here is wire one on the left. Here is wire two on the right. We'll indicate that the current is going away from us by drawing an X. X means that the current is moving away, and we have currents I1 and I2. These two wires are separated by a certain distance. So we will call that distance D, and the distance is given as 18.0 centimeters. We need to find the point in between, or at least along a line between these two wires, such that the net magnetic field is zero. Well, since I2 has three times the current as I1. I would imagine that the point would have to be closer to I1 than it is to I2. Now, why I think that, it's because we have shown that the magnitude of the magnetic field due to a long, straight, 
current carrying wire is equal to mu naught i over 2 pi times r, where i is the current in the wire and r is the distance away from the wire. From this, we could see that the magnetic field is directly proportional to the current. So the magnetic field due to wire 1 is equal to mu naught i1 over 2 pi. And I'm going to call this r1, where r1 is the distance from wire 1 to the point at which the magnetic field is going to be 0. And I'm going to just, in my picture, say that that point is probably right around there. I don't know exactly, but I'm going to let my algebra help me determine that. And that point is a distance of R1 away from the wire. Now, wire 2 is also contributing At that point, we know that the magnetic field line is a circle centered on the wire. And since the current is going away from us, the right-hand rule would say that the magnetic field, its orientation is clockwise on that circle, which means at the point in which we are assuming that the net magnetic field will be zero, the magnetic field due to wire one will be pointing straight down. Straight down because that magnetic field vector is tangent to the circle formed by the magnetic field lines, and the orientation of that vector has the same orientation of the circle as given by our right-hand rule. Now, now, I drew that point closer to current 1 than to current 2 because since current 1 is 3 times weaker than current 2, current 2 has to be 3 times as far away from, or wire 2 has to be 3 times as far away from wire 1 in order for the magnitude or the strength of the magnetic field due to each wire to be equal to each other. Now I know that because the magnetic field is directly proportional to current and inversely proportional to distance. So if the current is three times stronger than, than the current in wire one, the distance from that point to wire 2 has to be 3 times as far away, is what the math tells me. But let's not assume that right now. Let's just use our algebra to help confirm our results. Because really, we just want to know the point in between the two wires. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to represent the magnetic field line of wire 2. Remember, that will be a circle centered about wire 2. And the orientation of this circle is going to be clockwise, given by our right-hand rule, which means that, um, that wire 2's magnetic field will be pointing straight up at that point of evaluation, straight up at the point at which the net magnetic field will be zero. And let's go ahead and label the distance from wire 2 to that point as R2. So with this said, if we want the net magnetic field to be zero, that means when we add up the magnetic field of the wire 1 and the magnetic field due to wire 2, they should sum to be 0. Now, being all along the same line, the vertical line, we can say that the magnetic field due to wire 2 
minus the magnetic field due to wire 1 must be equal to 0. So in other words, and this was obvious, the two magnetic fields must be equal to each other in magnitude. Now we could use this to help us find the point in between the two wires where the net magnetic field must be zero. So let's go ahead and equate our magnetic fields. Mu naught I1 over 2 pi R1 must be equal to mu naught I2 over 2 pi R2, where R1 and R2 are the distances from wire 1 and wire 2, respectively. Well, a mu naught and 2 pi on the left side cancels with a mu naught and a 2 pi on the right side. Also, the current I2 we said is 3 times I1. So we could write I1 over R1 is equal to 3I1 over R2. I1 cancels with I1. So what we have here then is 1 over R1 is equal to 3 over R2. Or expressed another way, R2 is equal to 3R1, just like we hypothesized. Because the current in wire 2 is three times as strong as the current in wire 1, the distance wire 2 is away from the point must be three times farther away than the distance the point is from wire 1. So with this said, let's express, let's determine that distance R1. And to determine the distance R1, let's recognize the fact that R2 is D minus R1 away from the point. Now where that comes from, we could see in our diagram. Here is R1. Here is the distance D. Here is R2. So R2 is equal to D minus R1. Let's go ahead and substitute that into our expression. This is equal to 3 times R1. So we end up with 4 R1 is equal to D, or R1 is equal to D over 4. Now D was equal to 18.0 centimeters. So we have R1 is equal to 9 half centimeters. Or in other words, R1 is equal to 4 point five zero centimeters. So this is where that point has to be in between the two wires for the net magnetic field to be zero. This point is a distance of 4.50 centimeters away from wire one, which is equal to and, and this point is also equal to 13.5 centimeters away from wire 2.